Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to another Coffee Talk podcast episode, except today I'm drinking hot cocoa and dandy marshmallows. If anybody has tried those, they're vegan marshmallows, the little mini ones. So I'm just, my inner child is very happy with today's choice of beverage. Let me know what you're drinking or what you're doing as you tune into today's episode. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about people pleasing for a couple of reasons, which I will allude you to. I recently, and by recently, I mean in the last two or three months, stumbled across this YouTuber that I've been watching, Bose vs. The World. I think she originally posts her videos to Twitch or she streams on Twitch and then posts them as YouTube videos. And I love them. I love her in general. I feel like she is just so cool. She's so wise and she'll be doing these true crime videos where she reacts to true crime, but she'll pause the video and analyze somebody and it is so accurate. She's also hilarious. So she recently did a video, actually it might not have been recently because I've watched a lot of them, but she did a video where she talked about different types of people pleasers. Like she paused and analyzed somebody that was a people pleaser and I was like blown away because I have never, I knew myself to be a people pleaser but I had never heard it articulated in such a way. So it made me fall down a, another wormhole of people pleasing and sit with it, you know, ask myself what types of ways I people please, catch myself people pleasing and holy hell when I tell you that this has I don't wanna say it's like drastically changed my life or anything, but it's definitely drastically changed my perspective and my choices, even just small choices, day-to-day -day choices in a way that I feel like are much more empowering. So I wanna talk about people pleasing today. I wanna to talk about different ways that we tend to people please, why we people please, what we're susceptible to when we are people pleasers and how to stop people pleasing so much or do so in a way that is more balanced because I do think that there are honorable intentions of people that tend to be people pleasers. In fact, I think that a lot of the times anybody that might be highly sensitive, specifically highly sensitive to other people's needs, where you can read people's energy really well, you can sense what people are needing in the moment, you're really good at giving advice, you are a very nurturing, caring person. Those are all really great attributes to have, but when out of balance or when they come at the expense of your own care, then it can turn into people pleasing. Or if you're doing those things with a subconscious or perhaps even conscious intention, seek validation or feel safe or out of feelings of codependency, that's where it starts to become an issue. So let's dive in. I texted myself things that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, this thing I've been doing with Coffee Talks lately, when ideas come to me, thoughts come to me and I just need to like text it as if I'm literally talking to somebody. It's exactly what I do and then I read them out to you. So do you consider yourself a people pleaser or have you ever caught yourself practicing people pleasing tendencies? Thumbs it up if you're a people pleaser. I'm definitely a people pleaser. I'll put two thumbs and if I had more I would put them up as well because I am 100% a people pleaser to a fault at times better than I used to be, still a work in progress. When you can be super sensitive to a room, when you can gauge energy really well, again, from great intentions, you can sometimes fall into people-pleasing tendencies of wanting to either really, really care for people to the point that you know you love them and you wanna care for them and you wanna just like shower them with love or other people's discomfort, especially the people you love and care about, but, but also genuinely anybody being uncomfortable makes you uncomfortable. And so you go out of your way to make the people around you comfortable so that you can then feel comfortable. But again, it comes at the expense of your own boundaries. It comes at the expense of taking care of yourself. So that's one style of people pleasing. Another style of people pleasing can come from avoiding conflict at all costs. This I struggle with. I struggle with this one because I still do this to this day and I can't tell sometimes when I'm avoiding conflict just because I don't want to deal with the uncomfortable feelings that come with conflicting with somebody or when I genuinely can just detach from a situation and not make it a big deal and, and choose different priorities that allow me to not care so much about what would normally get caught up in perhaps my ego or anything that would make me feel some sense of conflict. So this is definitely an area of practice for me. I am very go with the flow, which is another type of people pleaser and I'll move into that one next. But if somebody does something that either offends you or hurts you in some way or puts you out in some way, do you tend to just kind of take it or accept it and move on with it? 
an example of this is I just posted a video a couple videos ago saying goodbye to Kohl's and the reaction I got was very supportive and I actually feel very great with the decision that I made but there were quite a few people that called me out saying like it seems like you're kind of just taking the loss and moving on with your life and to an extent or from one perspective yeah you could totally say that I think this is what I mean when I say that I still am a work in progress with avoiding conflict because Part of it probably did come from me avoiding conflict to avoid the discomforts of conflict and also, like I said, the drama that comes with conflict and also the, the cost it would be to take up that fight. But another part of me, again, also was able to sit back and think, what's more important to me? Do I have other fresh ideas? Is there a way that I can turn this into a positive experience? And so that's the way or the path that intuitively felt right to me. So the conflict one is difficult. Sometimes it genuinely comes from a place of just being able to choose a path that doesn't require any conflict to be necessary. But other times I definitely think that we can avoid conflict solely just because we don't want to deal with the discomfort of sticking up for ourselves or advocating for ourselves or saying, hey, what you did there was really not okay. So the next one is morphing into the people around you. And I hate to, why do I hate to bring it to astrology? Okay, there you go, I just did it. So for me to say, I hate to bring it to astrology, I love astrology, okay? I don't think that it's a, a backed science or anything, but I think that it's a very beautiful poetic way to talk about people's personality traits and to get inspired by the different planetary alignments that can bring certain themes to certain chapters of life, et cetera, et cetera. The fact that I was about to say, I hate to bring it to astrology is because I have read and gotten many comments and also can read energy really well when I'm around certain people that are like, ugh, astrology and kind of turn up their nose to it, right? I am a Pisces through and through. Pisces tend to be incredibly adaptable and that is another style of people pleasing is just adapting to the room around you, adapting to the people around you, adapting to the energy around you. Again, for a couple reasons. One, so that nobody ever feels uncomfortable with your presence. Not that it's bad to have a strong presence. In fact, I think people that have strong presence tend to be able to dominate a room, but sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes that can be a bad thing. And when you're able to instead adapt to the energy of the room, you can mesh with all kinds of people. The pro of being super adaptable, the pro of being able to pull out different sides of yourself when you're around different types of people with the right proper balance, it can also make you a very welcoming energy. It can make people feel very comfortable around you. It can introduce you to different types of people, all types of eclectic friends that Come from different backgrounds or have different stories or have different interests or have different just are completely different and you're able to you know open up your energy around different types of people again it's all about finding the balance of boundaries so you don't want to necessarily merge to other people's ideals their beliefs what they want to do like if you just always constantly go for what the people around you want to do that's merging you can do that to a certain extent, but at some point you have to say, okay, why don't we do this today? Or why don't we watch that movie? Or why don't we get this food? A very unhealthy example of this type of people pleaser would be if you're around a situation, a group conversation, or even just a conversation with one person who's talking about something that you truly genuinely do not believe, but you will go along with their beliefs solely just to go with the flow of the conversations. Instead of creating conflict or potential conflict, hopefully if that person is emotionally mature enough, you could say, actually, I don't agree with that point. This is the way that I look at that. And you can have really cool conversations with two people that see things very differently, but can come together to show each other opposite ends of a certain point of view. But if you are a go with the flow type person, you might just go, yeah, I completely agree with that. Even though internally you're like, I do not agree with what you're saying whatsoever. You're at a concert and everybody wants to go to a party after a concert. You don't really want to go to that party but everybody else wants to go to this party. And so you're just kind of like, ah, whatever, I guess I'll just go to the party. Being someone that can go with the flow can be a very positive personality trait, but not when it comes at the expense of putting yourself into uncomfortable positions or neglecting or denying your own values or your own beliefs. Another style of people pleasing can be over caring for other people. So nurturing and taking care of other people, again, to the expense of yourself because 
being a nurturing person is not a bad thing. Caring for other people is not a bad thing. If you naturally, inherently are very good at that, it's something that can actually take you very far in life. It's something you could use to navigate you to the right profession in your life. It's something you can use in your family life. It's something you can use with people that you love, with pets, with animals, with the environment, so many different things. But when you are almost on a mission to care for other people, because one, it either distracts you from having to take care of yourself or two, it makes you feel like you are needed or safe or accepted or validated, then that's when that people pleasing goes out of balance. And the other people pleasing style that I wrote down is when you give over the top, and this is different from nurturing and caring, because this style of people pleasing could be a very extravagant gift giving. This can also be like love bombing. This can be like giving so many compliments to somebody. This can be just doing the utmost for other people in a giving manner. And this can especially happen when you first meet somebody and you really want them to like you, or if you're trying to get a job and you're doing this in interviews or you need a potential love interest and you might potentially not know or subconsciously be love bombing them. I don't mean to say that it's manipulative, I should find a better word for it, but it is a very subconscious thing that we do when we're trying to safely attach to somebody. So we think if we overgive, if we exceed people's expectations, if we boost them with tons of compliments, if we give them everything they could want or need and more, then they're gonna like us, they're gonna love us, they're gonna choose us for the job, et cetera, et cetera. And that will eventually lead to things like burnout, which this is a perfect segue for me to talk about what people pleasers end up being susceptible to. And this is the list that I came up with. Again, if you guys ever can think of other things too, if this bounces any ideas off in your mind, definitely come on over to YouTube if you're not here already and keep the conversation rolling because this is just all the things I could think of within this subject. But people will end up taking advantage of you. And it might not be in all of the areas or all of the people that you tend to go out of your way to please, but you will eventually run up against somebody who will see your people-pleasing tendencies, your people-pleasing nature, and use that to their own advantage. Even if it's subconscious, there are very, like I said, just naturally dominant personalities that you can come across. And it's this weird thing, if we were to talk about it in energy terms, it would almost be like opposites attracting. Straightforward with what they want, like it's a forward driver, if that makes sense and doesn't always think as much about what how it affects other people, doesn't drive on empathy, if you will. And then you have somebody who might be incredibly laid back, incredibly go with the flow, very empathetic. And if these two people come together and they are unhealthy or unbalanced in any kind of way, the people pleaser, the very laid back person, will override their own boundaries, will burn themselves dry trying to please the dominating personality. And that dominating personality, if they are unhealthy or unbalanced will take advantage of the people pleaser to fulfill their needs, to get what they need from the people pleaser, to be cared for, to be nurtured. You can see this play out in relationships. You can even see this play out in friendships. You can see this play out in so many different ways. This leads me to the next thing that people pleasers tend to be susceptible to, and that is resentment. Because what ends up happening if you spend years and years people pleasing, whether it's with one specific relationship or in multiple relationships or multiple ways, you will end up resenting the people that are on the other end of your people pleasing, if not resenting yourself. Because you've spent all of this time ignoring your own intuition, ignoring your own needs, ignoring your own boundaries, ignoring your own beliefs or values in order to hopefully please other people. And then when you realize that you can never please everybody, there's always gonna be people that'll find a flaw or a fault or that will take advantage. And then that ends up turning into a sense of resentment of I've done everything to make you happy and now you don't care about me or I resent myself because I've gone so far in my life or I've spent so much time caring for other people that I don't even know who I am anymore. Like these are common resentments that can start to manifest from spending a lot of time pleasing other people at the expense of ourselves. The next thing people pleasers are susceptible to, a lack of respect from both ourselves and other people. Let's say a business situation, you walk into a room of a lot of very business heads, if you will, and you're a very soft soul, you're a very people pleasing style of person, people will not take you seriously. They won't have respect for you because they'll think, oh, this person has no backbone. This person does everything for everybody else. This person is easily moved or changes or adapts or whatever it is. And so not only will certain types of people not 
respect you, but you can also get to the point of not respecting yourself, not respecting again, I know I've said this a million times, but your own boundaries, your own values, your own needs. When you go so long pleasing other people and those things get put on the back burner, you are, whether you're conscious or unconscious of it, totally disrespecting yourself. Pause, hot cocoa break. Will you be doing some Christmas shopping this year? If so, then you need to make sure that you add Parade to your list. Shop this season sale and get 20% off using my code BFTALK. Going to the mall to try on bras and underwear during the holidays is a nightmare you no longer need to worry about. If you're worried about sizing, Parade has a find your bra size quiz so you can find your size without ever having to leave your bed. Finding sustainable undergarments that last more than one wash makes me feel really good, and you don't have to break the bank to do so. Parade creates creative basics that are designed to make you feel like your truest self with size styles ranging from extra small to 3XL. My personal favorite is their super soft sleep pants that are the comfiest pants to the point that I normally cannot sleep in pants. I'm a shorts gal when it comes to going to bed. These are so soft and breathable that they've become my favorites for the winter season. Plus you can wear them when you're just lounging around your house or you're on the go, need to run to the store. Their smooth lift triangle bralette is better than a push-up bra. It gives your cleavage a boost while still being so comfortable for all day use without any underwire. And for all of my fellow larger chested girls, it has a wide band that's super supportive and doesn't dig into you. Tis the season to give a gift for your friends, family, loved ones, and yourself that you'll actually use. Parade also donates 1% of its sales to organizations that they believe in. Their underwear and PJs are stocking stuffers that won't disappoint. Plus, they also have really cute zodiac underwear for the astrology lover in your life even again if it's you. Join the parade and get sustainable creative basics that prioritize comfort and quality. Take up to 20% off at checkout again when you use the code BFTALK. Welcome to the parade, an underwear story that represents you. If you're looking for a way to get a boost of energy without any caffeine, then definitely check out Organifi. Organifi is a line of organic superfood blends that offer plant-based nutrition made with high quality ingredients. Each Organifi blend is science-backed to craft the most effective doses with ingredients that are organic and free of fillers and also contains less than 3 grams of sugar per serving. You can try out their Organifi green juice with essential superfoods and a clinical dose of ashwagandha. It helps reduce stress and support healthy cortisol levels. Or my personal favorite is the Organifi red juice, which is a superfood punch that increases your energy without any caffeine and again, only 2 grams of sugar per serving. Each Organifi blend is easy to use by simply mixing it with water or your favorite beverage while on the go, and they don't compromise quality for taste. Organifi takes pride in offering the best tasting superfood products on the market at a price that works out to less than $3 a day if you're drinking them every day. You can experience Organifi's high quality superfoods without breaking the bank. Head on over to Organifi.com talk and use the code talk for 20% off your entire order. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com slash T-A-L-K. Okay, so where was I? People pleasing can also lead to burnout, which I think one of the first signs of burnout would be feelings of resentment starting to boil up, but also burnout because when, again, you spend so much time trying to fill everybody else's cup, yours ends up getting depleted. And so you end up with no energy left and that burnout can ripple into so many other issues. Then you end up with depression, you can end up with anxiety, you can end up with a lack of motivation for your own life, a lack of interest in other people. You can get so burnt out that just being around people exhausts you. This is something I definitely experienced a few years back where I was in a very, I, I couldn't see it at the time, but I was in a big state of burnout. Being around people just exhausted me to the point that I would get so so anxious anytime I knew that I had something on the calendar that would require me to leave my own bubble of just me, myself, and I and go do something social. It would, didn't matter if it was friends, it didn't matter if it was family, it didn't matter if it was a work or a social event, it would cause so much anxiety in me because I just felt like I had no energy left to keep faking this super happy bubbly niceness that I don't even want to say it was necessarily faking, I just, that was just, it, it was rooted from the place just wanting people to be happy and comfortable and feeling like that was my purpose in life was to make people feel happy and comfortable. That's not a bad purpose to have, but not at the expense of yourself. That sense of burnout can definitely lead to multiple more issues. And if you are feeling burnt out, we just had to talk about that before this one. So feel free to hop to that coffee talk after this one. And the last thing that I wrote down for what you can be susceptible to, carrying the weight that isn't yours. So what I mean by this is, if you are a style of people pleaser where 
you're really good at helping solve other people's problems. You're really good at giving advice. You're really good at caring for people that are in a tough situation or are going through a hard time. It's not always conscious. People will tend to come to you for advice. People will tend to come to you to talk about hard things in life. And that is an amazing thing. I think it's a very beautiful, again, like, mm, mm, what am I trying to say here? It takes a level of awareness to realize or sort through what is your energy versus what is you absorbing the energy you're around. You can still be somebody that's very good at holding space for other people and you can do so with very clear boundaries even if you don't have to state them they're just within yourself i do this visualization of especially when i feel like i'm picking up on energy i'm around where i'm like "Ooh, this isn't mine picture a book shelf take these boxes and i box up energy that isn't mine and put it back up on the shelf I personally love giving advice. I feel I am very good at holding space for anybody that's going through a hard time and it is one of my not only natural ability, uh, natural ability, can't speak today. It's not only one of my natural abilities, it is one of the things that I feel like is part of my sole purpose on this planet. I feel fulfilled when I can help somebody solve a problem, when I can help somebody feel better when they're going through a hard time. It's taken me years again to find the balance between holding that space and being empathetic towards other people and hopefully making people feel better, but not carrying that energy with me afterwards, not moving on to the next thing or moving on with my day and then suddenly being like, where is this anger coming from? Where is this insecurity coming from? Where is this frustration coming from? And again, there's probably other things that being a people pleaser can suscept you to or put you in the, actually, how did I miss this? I feel like I kind of touched on this with the whole taking advantage, but I also do believe that being a people pleaser can also leave you susceptible to running across or maybe perhaps it was actually already in your life, which is what caused you to be a people pleaser, coming across narcissists. And not people that just tend to have narcissistic qualities, but I'm talking like full blown narcissists. This conversation is flowing exactly the way I was hoping it would because that leads me into my next point, which is what makes us become people pleasers? Why do we do this? It can be embedded from childhood, which is kind of what I was just touching on there. When you end up being either raised around or by a narcissist, it can definitely turn you into a people pleaser. When you're confronted with conflict, when you're confronted with really uncomfortable situations, especially as a child, especially as a kid, when you're confronted with trauma, your reaction can be to freeze. It can be to fight back. It can be to flop, drop everything and everything goes into chaos mode. Or you can fawn, which is people pleasing. You can learn a lot of these coping mechanisms for dealing with somebody that is narcissistic or dealing with situations that were really difficult or people that seemed perhaps really upset. It doesn't even have to be a narcissist. Maybe you grew up with a parent that struggled with depression and you just wanted to try everything you possibly could to please that parent, to make them feel better. Maybe you had friends in your life that you felt like they neglected you or they left you out and so you spent a lot of your childhood years trying to make your peers like you or accept you so that you felt like you were included in the group. So definitely experiences in childhood can program us to become people pleasers in adulthood, which I highly recommend going to therapy for because that definitely helped me. The next is that we can sometimes end up people pleasing because we want to um, avoid uncomfortable feelings. And specifically when, again, we feel like we don't have the proper tools to deal with uncomfortable feelings, we go out of our way to avoid them at all costs. We don't just do this with people pleasing, we do this in almost all areas of life. When you think about how convenience has become such a high value in our society, we don't like to do anything that makes us uncomfortable. We want the reward without the work. The same is true with our interactions with other people. We want people to like us, we want people to enjoy us, we wanna have good times with people without having to put in the work to build strong relationships or strong interactions with other people that can allow us to feel that sense of safety of connection so we go out of our way to avoid any kind of conflict we go out of our way to avoid any kind of uncomfortable feelings in our interactions with other people but that also leaves us with very surface level relationships and very surface level connections with others we make ourselves submissive to other people because one we either feel uncomfortable in 
our own states of dominance. So it might make you feel uncomfortable to assert yourself, or maybe you were never taught how to assert yourself or how to advocate for yourself. So it's easier for you to go into a submissive role because then one, it makes everybody feel like they have a sense of dominance over you. Again, a lot of this happens very subconsciously. It's not something you might actively choose. And so that level of dominance might make people feel really good, might make people feel very empowered. So being in your presence empowers other people and again, this is all happening subconsciously, which is why we end up becoming people pleasers because, hey, people really like being around me because I just submit to them. I just do whatever they want to do. I say whatever they want to say. I become whoever these people need me to be in that moment. The next one is to seek approval. We already talked about this. Another reason can be learned or inherited codependency. Being in your own presence, if being independent makes you feel uncomfortable, then we tend to go into codependent behaviors, codependent lifestyles where we need to have someone around us all of the time to avoid, again, the uncomfortable feeling of being just with ourselves. And so we will go out of our way to keep the people that are our codependent relationships happy so that they stick around so we never have to do things by ourselves. We never have to learn how to be independent. We never have to learn how to be okay with hanging out with ourselves. And the last one I thought of is feelings of guilt or an unhealthy level of empathy. So something my therapist actually brought up to me one time and I'd never heard this term be used before, but she called it pathological empathy. Pathological empathy is basically not being able to help yourself from feeling overwhelmingly empathetic for other people. It's not being able to draw that boundary where you say, I can feel for you, but not to the point that I feel sick to my stomach because I feel so bad for this situation that has nothing to do with me. When you can, in a way, empower yourself with your empathy, when you have full control or a certain level of control over your empathy where you're able to feel for people but you're able to also harness it in, then you have a healthy level of empathy. But when you have unhealthy empathy, when you have pathological empathy, no matter who you come across, what stories you read, wherever you are, you're constantly feeling the feelings of other people. You're constantly putting yourself in the shoes of other people and you cannot help it. Or like I said, feelings of guilt. So again, this kind of comes back to childhood, but it can also just in general come to how you view yourself as a person. If you feel guilty for taking up space, if you don't feel like you are worthy of owning the body you have, the space you take, the role, the life that you want to live, if you feel like you are not worthy of it, if you feel feelings of guilt just for solely being yourself, then that can lead into feeling like you need to please other people all the time so that you feel like it's okay to exist as deep and profound as that sounds. Okay, I've been talking a lot, so I'm gonna wrap this up really quickly on what you can do if you've identified with anything I've talked about today, being a people pleaser. The first thing you can do is accept that discomfort is an inherent part of life. We did not come to earth to live comfortable, cushy lives. I mean, you can definitely have chapters and pockets of your life that are very cozy and very comfortable, but it's actually in our discomfort that we as human beings or we as soul beings evolve and grow. And so when you actively avoid feeling discomfort, then you're actually inhibiting your own growth. Not only are feelings of discomfort inevitable in relationships and in connections with other people, they also create stronger relationships and stronger connections and stronger bonds with other people. Because when you can go through conflict, when two people can respect their similarities and their differences and still love and care for each other, that creates a much, much stronger bond. Not to mention feelings of discomfort are also inevitable in terms of just living life as an individual, as yourself, as who you are. You are an independent being, an independent person. We might all come from the same source, depending on what you believe in, but you are a subsection of that source energy that needs to go through your timeline, go through your life, learning how to love and care and completely empower yourself in who you are. So if you can accept that there are gonna be times that you feel super uncomfortable, whether it's from disagreeing with somebody or just in your own being, in your own body, in your own presence, because you know life doesn't feel so good right now, but you're gonna be able to get yourself through it. That can help turn off the part of your brain that'll go into people-pleasing mode as a survival mechanism. What else did I write here? 
<clears throat> Learning boundaries is also super important. I did a coffee talk on boundaries in the last year or two, so I won't dive too deep into it. And you can definitely go back and check out that boundary coffee talk, but it's learning how to set the proper boundaries in all different types of relationships and know that it can be difficult because sometimes your boundaries shift and change. On some days you might have different boundaries because you only have so much to give. But the best way that I tend to look at boundaries is I can only give once my cup is full. So if I'm coming from any kind of empty cup, my boundaries change. I have less time or energy to give to other people and it's not selfish. It's solely so that once I'm able to fill my cup back up, then I'll be able to overflow into other people. So learning how to set proper boundaries, learning how to gauge what you're feeling will help you set proper boundaries. As an example, if you're in an interaction with somebody and something boils up in you, you start to feel like, ooh, that offended me for some reason, or ooh, I'm feeling really uncomfortable, honor that. Find the best way to say, actually, I don't like that you just did that, or can I tell you what I actually need from you in this moment, depending on you know the relationship you have to that person? Or if it's more of a stranger or someone that you don't really have a high value connection to, you can find the best way to exit, get out of that situation. So you stop people pleasing just to make that uncomfortable feeling go away. Lean into your intuition. Your intuition will be able to tell you when your resources are depleted and when your boundaries are being crossed. In fact, I might even go as far as saying that you probably already have boundaries, you just don't know them but your intuition does know them. So it's not necessarily creating boundaries, it's acknowledging boundaries, it's recognizing your boundaries and then honoring them, especially when they're being crossed, but also before anybody even comes close enough to cross your boundaries, know where they are, start learning them, start tuning into your intuition so you can feel when a boundary is being tested. So the next way to deal with this style of people pleasing is, and I just said this one, but I'm gonna re hit it home for a specific reason, fill up your cup first. And this is for those of you guys that are people pleasers with the purest of intentions. Like you're not necessarily doing it as a survival mechanism or as a safe way to connect or to bond, but because you are inherently the style or type of person that tends to be very nurturing, very caring, very empathetic, and you feel like that's a strength of yours, then the best way that you can make sure that it stays in balance, that you don't lean too far into people pleasing with those natural tendencies and abilities is to make sure your cup is filled first. Because if if your cup is filled first, then any style of people pleasing, if you will, that overflows from that full cup is no longer really people pleasing. It's active, chosen, empowered giving. It's okay, I'm fulfilled. I've got all of my needs are met. So now how can I help you meet your needs? Or I enjoy helping other people or holding space for other people or caring for other people or nurturing other people. And I'm able to do that because I've already done all of those things for myself. So fill up your cup first and then know that you can totally lean into those natural strengths in your personality without it being a people pleasing tendency. The fourth thing I wrote down is a mantra, an affirmation, something you can take with you, but stop pleasing other people and please your damn self. So this kind of leans into the filling your own cup, but seriously, reiterate anytime you catch yourself in a people pleasing state, when you catch yourself doing things for other people and then feeling a little angry that you're not getting it in return or neglecting your own needs or whatever it is, just repeat in your head, please your damn self. Just please yourself, do the things that will please you. An example of this is I specifically and perhaps subconsciously chose a partner in my life that is very good at doing this, very good at acknowledging what they want to do and then going ahead and doing it. And so it's so healthy for me to be around somebody like that because it allows me that type of energy. It allows me that sense of permission of like, wow, they just kind of do what they want. I'm gonna do what I want. What would make me feel really good right now? And then go off and literally do that thing. Like please your damn self the way that you wanna please everybody else in your life. and that will eventually end up filling your cup. And last but not least, super important, and is again, we've done so many coffee talks up until this point that I could probably create a maze or like a tree or a web of coffee talks you could go through, like one to another to another, because we have talked about this before, but it's a, another really important point when it comes to people pleasing is the idea of responsibility or separation of tasks, which comes from the courage to be disliked, which was a coffee talk we had this year. So. The idea of separating tasks means you no longer take on the tasks that aren't yours to begin with. How comfortable other people feel is not your responsibility. How other people perceive you is not your responsibility. 
how other people are feeling is not your responsibility. And when you separate tasks, when you say this is a task, but it's not mine to carry, that's that person's task. You're actually respecting that person, even if they feel disrespected in the moment because they've maybe gotten used to you being a people pleaser, but you're respecting that person by saying that's actually up to you to deal with or up to you to analyze. Even when you think about how people perceive us, let's use that as an example and how we perceive other people. Everything that we perceive is filtered through our own feelings and our own experiences. So a lot of the times, the way that we judge other people is really a mirror of what we've experienced, what we're feeling, or what we might fear about ourselves. Yes, somebody can act a certain way and we might not agree with it, but our judgment towards us tells us a lot more about ourselves than it does other people and vice versa. The way people judge you or the way people perceive you or the way that people take what you do and what you say and how it generates through their own perceptions says more about them than it does about you. So stop trying to take on the task of making other people pleased with you, of making other people like you or validate you and do all of those things for yourself. Take on the task and the responsibility of caring for yourself because separating those tasks allows other people the respect that you deserve as well of knowing that this is my responsibility, this is their responsibility, and when we all take care of our own responsibilities, that's when we can actually have healthy connection, healthy communication, and healthy relationships. And so there you go. That's my chat today on people pleasing. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please go check out Bose versus the world if you're looking for a reaction channel. It's really good. If you like true crime, she specifically reacts to true crime along with some other random stuff. Uh, some of the highlight videos that I would say to watch are the man child court case. Oh my gosh, I can't even, it's like an hour long. And not only are the points that she makes so valid, but it's also just the most in insane thing I've ever watched in my life. And thanks to Bose for, you know, igniting this conversation in me today. So I'm choosing you a cup of naughty hot cocoa because, you know, if you are a people pleaser, it might feel a little naughty to go about pleasing your own self. That's, that all just came out so wrong. It, it might feel a little, I, I'm not even gonna say it. Just enjoy your damn self and I'll talk to all of you guys in our next Coffee Talk podcast episode. Bye guys.